What's up guys, I'm Josh Mosman and welcome to another motocross action video. This time we are testing the 2023 Honda CRF450 Works Edition. This bike retails for $12,399. That's a $2,800 jump up from the stock Honda CRF 450 for 2023. That bike made some significant upgrades for the new model year. It's not a new bike, but it made some engine and chassis upgrades that we really liked on the stock model. Now, Honda threw a boatload of aftermarket parts to this bike. They bumped up the price, and we're excited to see how it works on the track here today. All right guys, good day here at Glen Helen. I got Dennis Stapleton here with me, chief MXA test rider. He's taught me a lot about testing motorcycles and he spent a ton of time on our 2023 CRF 450 over the past few months. So I got him helping me with this test video. Good times, now let's get into the details about this bike. So the 2023 Honda CRF 450, like I mentioned at the top of the video, got some minor updates for this new model season. Now those updates translate over into this Works Edition model. This Works Edition bike is the same stock model, only with quite a few aftermarket upgrades on it. Uh, the biggest changes that we really appreciated for 2023 on this bike is the longer and narrower intake port and also the 44 mil throttle body. So Honda went from a 46 to a 44 mil throttle body. The intake and the throttle body both help with the smooth uh, low end torque and made the bike easier to ride down low, smoother and just overall made the CRF 450 a more friendly machine coming out of corners. That was the big update for 2023 on the stock model. They also added some stiffness at the front of the frame to try to balance out the, the chassis and get a little more just balance coming into corners. That wasn't as big of a difference for us, something that we noticed right away, but it is a nice touch that Honda is continuing to improve their chassis and continuing to focus on, on making it more of a balanced bike. So going into the upgrades and the reason why this CRF 450 Works Edition is $2,800 more than the stock bike, well, they added a lot of things onto this bike. Like last year, this comes with the Yoshimura RS12 exhaust system that comes with the header and the muffler. That's different than KTM does. KTM on their factory editions, they'll just add an aftermarket muffler. This one, they go all out with the header and the muffler. Last year, it had a tie header, tie muffler. This year, it's got a stainless steel header exhaust on this bike. Um, it also comes with the resonance chamber. So stainless steel, yes, it is a little bit heavier, but it adds a little bit of durability. So that is something that we like about it. Diving into the rest of this thing, it comes with the throttle jockey graphics and seat cover. You guys know if you watch any of the videos, I always praise gripper seat covers because it's just like free money for me. If you can hold on to the bike and stick with it easier with that gripper seat, it's gonna save me a lot of energy and help me to be able to ride faster and longer. So that's something that I really appreciate about this bike. So Honda has been touching up their intake and exhaust ports on their head for the last couple of years now. We did dive into the engine uh, two years ago now. It's the same. Uh, same engine that they have for this model year, and it's not a huge upgrade. It's not like they're doing massive port porting inside of the cylinder. It's not like they're doing uh, massive changes, but just by touching it up a little bit, it at least shows that, hey, Honda is not offering you the same exact stock engine. They are touching it up a little bit. And with that, they have the Yoshimura header and muffler, and they have dedicated ECU settings with the Works Edition model. The suspension is also upgraded on this bike. It's got the titanium, nitride coating on the bottom of the fork legs, and it's got the Kashima coating on the top of the fork legs. It's got dedicated suspension settings for this model, and it has an 18 mil shock shaft, which is bigger than the 16 mil that comes on the stock bike. Adds a little more hold up in the rear end of this bike, so big pluses that uh, Honda is giving this bike, dedicated suspension settings, dedicated map settings, and uh, all these things are giving you a little more value when you buy this bike at the dealership. Another power difference on this bike, it comes with a Hinson clutch basket. So the, the plates, fibers, inner hub, pressure plate are all stock, but the basket is from Henson on this bike. It's the same Henson clutch basket that you can buy aftermarket for your stock 450, but it comes 
already installed on the Works Edition bike. This bike also has the red head, uh, looks pretty factory, it looks just like Chase Sexton's Honda 450, so that's pretty cool. It also has Works Edition engraved into the side of the engine. Lots of little upgrades on this bike. It's got the DID gold chain, it's got Renthal handlebars and the Renthal Kevlar grips. So the Kevlar grips are super strong, super durable, um, but they're definitely more comfortable than the stock Honda grips. So lots of little upgrades on this bike. It also does come stock with a twin air filter. It has DID LTX rims, and it comes stock with a 1.1 radiator cap. It's the same cap that comes in the stock bike. That's something that we always upgrade on this bike before we take it racing. All right guys, so I actually didn't get to ride today. I do have to get credit to Ezra Lewis. He was wearing my O'Neill jersey today. And uh, so this is the second time I've made him wear my, my name on the back of his jersey. But Jody put me on the bench for a little bit while uh, I'm recovering from a crash. But Dennis Stapleton, you and Ezra rode the bike a ton today. What did you think of it? Well, overall, we, we raced here Sunday and I rode the 2023 450R, uh, the standard bike, came out today, jumping on this bike here and let me tell you, it's a big difference in the handling department. The shock definitely is a lot firmer. Rolling onto the high speed straightaways with big rolling bumps has a lot more bike control and ground feel uh, when you're accelerating really hard, which is nice. It allows the swing or, or the wallow feel to have a better hold up and uh, allow you to cut back and forth where you want to be placed on the track. Um, the forks definitely have a better crust feel than the standard bike. The standard bike has kind of a hard hand feel crust uh, initial when you slap down or touch initial hard bump. This bike has definitely a better hand feel initially. And the ramp up at the bottom is more readable. You understand where you're at when you're lower in the stroke. So you have more confidence to ride this bike harder and better down the hills. Um, probably my favorite thing about this bike is how quiet that Yoshimura exhaust is. It's a uh, nice tracks well. Ezra really liked map one, had good torque. He felt that that map was really good for him today. I did like map three, the fast blinking map, the fastest map. I just like the on off throttle feel for me. I thought that was the best map of today. This bike definitely the way it's set up allows you to be able to pull the higher gears a little easier, lug this bike and not feel like you're overriding it or revving it. Similar to the standard bike, you can definitely feel the changes Honda did in this model. All right guys, so yes, today is our first day of riding on the Works Edition bike, but we did dyno this bike last year. Yes, there are some updates to the intake track and uh, updates to the mapping on it, so we will have to get this one on the dyno before we write our full MXA race test for the magazine, but I do have to let you guys know, this bike was 3.2 horsepower faster than the stock model in 2022. And that's what Ezra and uh, Dennis were telling us today, that they felt this bike is stronger and able to hold third gear in the corners easier. Um, so that is pretty nice. But the nice part about it, last year's bike hit 60 horsepower on the dyno. Now I'm expecting this bike to be in a similar range as the engine mods that they made for 2023. Didn't affect peak horsepower all too much. It also hit 35, uh, 37 foot pounds of torque on the dyno last year. So very strong motorcycle um, and a big difference from the stock bike. But because of the mapping, because of the smooth Yoshimura muffler and exhaust, this bike is still fairly rideable and it's not blaring coming out of the corners, ripping your shoulders out of their sockets. It's still a smooth bike and that's something that we really appreciate. Uh, I raced the Honda last year at the Paula National and I'm actually gonna race this Honda at the Hangtown National coming up in about a month and a half. So we're doing, uh, I'll be racing different bikes at each race and uh, gonna ride Yamaha at one, Gas Gas, probably the Kawasaki at the other one, but Honda, I'm gonna ride at Hangtown, so I'm looking forward to getting this thing set up for me. But uh, Dennis, give us a rundown on what you've done to set up our 23 stock bike for you and kind of a, a projection of what we're gonna do next on this. Yeah, so 
First off, the most uh, favored item that we've put on is the Ride Engineering 23.5 clamps across the board from entry level to the fastest guys in our group, Josh Mosman. Everybody seems to love that clamp. So we're definitely gonna be uh, leaning towards getting that clamp on the bike for Josh for the national. So the 22 offset triple clamps on the standard bike allow it to have a lot of front end movement, allows the tire to really grab the dirt and allow the bike to move side to side a lot more. The Ride Engineering 23.5 clamp really allows the bike to be stable and roll into your turns nice without all that side to side tire grip movement. Uh, which is definitely a plus on this chassis. The suspension settings on this bike are a lot different than the production bike. We're a lot more in range for Josh to be able to race this bike. So we have to get Josh out on the bike to be able to get a fine tune, see where we're at, see how much stiffer we need to make it for a national. As this bike is built for a consumer, uh, national still a little different. No matter what speed you're going, the track's brutal. So the question commonly asked, with the Works Edition. Is this bike worth the $2,800? Definitely, if you're a rider that's not getting free exhaust or sponsored by a suspension company that allows you to be able to get free $800 lower tube coatings or $2,200 Kashima coatings, this bike's definitely worth it. Just the time to be able to stop and take your stuff to someone to do this and just bolt it on and go is a huge, huge improvement in just getting your bike, getting it set up and being able to go ride. Just the hints and clutch basket, Kashima coating, and all that takes hours and hours of your time where this bike is pretty much find your settings, get comfortable, and you're racing it right off the bat. So today, obviously, is our first day getting a chance to ride this bike. So between Ezra and I, we're about a 10 pound difference. Uh, today, I ran the Saga 107 starting point, uh, standard fork, standard shock, initial ride. Uh, I end up going two clicks stiffer on the fork and two clicks softer on the shock to kind of have that front end feel as the bumps have got a little bit bigger this year at Glen Helen with all the rain we've got. A lot of sand has washed onto the track. So I positioned the bike kind of be a little bit front end high today, but that's kind of where we rode it. I left the SAG at 107. Uh, it was a neutral spot for a few guys to ride it. Overall, we'll be getting more time and more updates. Look for it in Motocross Action Magazine or on the website. Charge for them bank bros and I'm grinding. Money on my mind and I'm headed to the top. I won't stop until I find it. Write my name in diamonds, but all these lights are blinding. I wonder is it worth it? Feel like I'm losing my mind. Yeah, remind.